You know, when you think of everything wrong with modern journalism, what websites come to mind? Is it Vice? They're up there. The Guardian, they're up there. For me, it's BuzzFeed. It is a website built on garbage reporting. The fact that they have a website called BuzzFeed News is laughable. Their journalistic integrity has never been established. Most of their traffic came from listicles and absurd clickbait. Uh, so as BuzzFeed continues to collapse, I continue to watch Enjoy. Now, just not that long ago, BuzzFeed, this was back in January. BuzzFeed to lay off 200 staff in latest round of cuts. Online publisher announces job losses shore up finances as Verizon unveils plan to sack 800 workers. BuzzFeed announced plans to lay off hundreds of staff as digital media firms struggle to turn a profit while dealing with the same financial issues that have plagued traditional publishers for years. Jonah Peretti, BuzzFeed's founder, said about 200 staff will be leaving, while separate announcement by Verizon Media Group, the owner of HuffPo, Yahoo, and AOL, said it would sack 800 employees. The cuts will affect BuzzFeed News' operations, which have largely been insulated from previous rounds of redundancies. Earlier this week, the site published a huge report claiming that President Trump ordered his personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, to lie to Congress, which, of course, was baloney sausage 2, hashtag great reporting BuzzFeed. It's unclear whether BuzzFeed cuts will affect the UK arm, oh, but hold on, of the company which was founded in 2013 and laid off a third of its editorial staff last year. The UK editor-in-chief, Janine Gibson, left the company at the end of last week. Peretti told BuzzFeed staff in an email that revenue was growing but now needed to cut costs to secure its financial future. But with the aim of never having to raise outside funding again, BuzzFeed has raised hundreds of millions of dollars from investors over the past decade without with the most recent investment valuing $1.6 billion. Who keeps investing in these failing companies, by the way? I mean, who would buy? It's like, who's buying newspapers? Since then, the market has cooled off on media investments, with some financial backers of the new media companies concerned by the fire sales of sites such as Mashable and Mike. Vice has also announced plans to reduce its workforce, with many new media sites also hit by changes to Facebook's algorithm. Quote, these changes will allow us to be a clear winner in the market as the economics of digital media continue to improve, said Peretti, announcing the 15% reduction in staff levels. He promised to tell his staff whether they would be affected by Monday and said uh, the company had been working to diversify its revenue away from online advertising. Right. Well, they also do interstitial ads where they sell plates and, and dishware um, that you didn't know they were selling you. He also says on a personal note, I've never thought about my job as just business. I care about the people at BuzzFeed. Well, it's good because uh, three months later, guess what? BuzzFeed pulls plug on UK and Australian news operations. <laughs> Cue the crabs. Either version, the dancing ones or the pubic ones, I suppose. Now, I don't like to celebrate people losing their jobs. And I hope each and every one of these employees will be able to gain uh, employment at their local McDonald's. Or if you're in Australia, Mackers. Um, I'm sure that they're hiring. I'm sure that Amazon is hiring delivery drivers. I'm sure they're bounced back. Uh, BuzzFeed is the same company that en uh, relentlessly printed um, hit pieces about friends of mine, like Mr. Dankula, uh, and uh, endlessly uh, went to deplatform and demonetized personal friends of mine. So I'm sorry, we're not always perfect, but I don't feel bad for them. I mean, I just, I'm just being honest. I'm celebrating this. I hope BuzzFeed in its entirety collapses, along with all of this legacy media crap. Send it all down the drain. BuzzFeed pulls plug in UK and Australian news operations website said it will focus on news that hits big in the U S after advertising revenue dries up. Now this is just four months, not even four months, three months later after they promised that that was it. We're done doing cuts. We're cut once we cut deep. We've got it all figured out. Everything's improving. Oopsie doopsie poopsie. Looks like we're closing two major locations. Buzzfeed is to end. It's news operations in the UK and Australia effective 
effectively marking the end of the digital upstart's global ambition to shake up traditional news media. Once derided for its focus on traffic-grabbing listicles, BuzzFeed transformed into a highly respected peer to traditional media outlets. No, it didn't. On Wednesday, it said that it was giving up on local news and politics coverage in favor of news that hits big. You're giving up on politics? And, and local, well, local news, I understand. But you're giving up on politics. Hmm. Who else has decided to give up on politics? Remember when Polygon and Kotaku and the people at Deadspin were all up in arms? I wonder if covering politics isn't profitable. Interesting. Maybe everyone's going to YouTube to get that kind of coverage. I don't know. But it's an interesting trend, isn't it? The company, which had been struggling before everything going on, further hammered its lifeblood of the, every, the outbreak further hammered its lifeblood of advertising revenue, has furloughed its 10 UK news staff and four Australia in, uh, as part of a strategic cutback. BuzzFeed launched a local newspaper operation in the UK just over six years ago. According to sources, those furloughed are highly unlikely to return to BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed UK will keep staff covering news with a global audience, such as investigations and operation and celebrity news coverage, for now at least. The economic and strategic reasons we are going to focus on news that hits big in the United States during this difficult period, the company said. Therefore, we will notify staff in the UK and Australia that we will not be planning to cover local news in those countries. We will be consulting with employees on our plans regarding furloughs and stand downs in those regions. Say it isn't so. BuzzFeed, say it isn't so. Every time you hear about BuzzFeed, it's them making another cut, isn't it? The company said that the cuts would also hit its flagship U.S. operation as it looks to hit savings goals while continuing to produce kinetic, powerful journalism. We want to reach the savings we need to produce the high-tempo, explosive journalism our readers rely on. Like how you lied about that, uh, that worker who got fired for having an OnlyFans account. <laughs> is that the kind of hard-hitting your reporting you're doing? This is amazing. Are you, are you all reading what I'm reading? BuzzFeed is failing. And whoever is in leadership there, by the way, I've gone through a couple of layoffs in my life, both being laid off and executing the layoff myself, laying off about 40 employees underneath me. It was a day that will live in my mind forever. It was the number one reason I started my own agency and swore to myself I would never lay off anyone again. Um, whew, the faces. Um, and having it be on the receiving end wasn't great either. Uh Whoever is in leadership at BuzzFeed isn't making the right decisions. Um, the leader, my boss at that company, when we did the layoffs, taught me a lot about it. And I was 25 years old, laying off literally every person old, was older than me that I was laying off. And you cut once and you cut deep because it is awfully brutal for morale to work in a company where you're just constantly having layoffs like every two months. That's exactly what is happening at BuzzFeed. Whoever is in charge there has zero foresight and isn't making the tough decisions. Cut once, cut deep, so you don't have to continue to do this. Although I appreciate it because I get to cover it every time, but nonetheless, BuzzFeed has maintained that it will still invest heavily in its news operation with a projection of investing $10 million more this year than the division makes and six million in 2021. So you're gonna invest 10 million more than it makes plus six million more than it makes. And you're wondering why you have to constantly be laying people off. If only somebody could figure this out. Now, of course it's okay to invest, but maybe you should invest two to three million and uh, keep the staff, you know, keep your infrastructure. Because after all, content is why people actually show up. Content is why uh, uh, people, I don't know, go to your website. I go to laugh, but I don't know if, if that's what other people do. Now, the unprecedented advertising slump brought on by the COOF has hastened the end of an already struggling business model. In January, Peretti posted a 2,500 word blog laying out plans to diversify the ailing business's revenue streams. Days later, it was reported that he had upgraded his Los Angeles home, buying a $5.2 million property. Shocking, I'm sure. 
He had previously publicly raised the prospect of merging with other digital publishers in order to gain the scale to fight on more equal terms with the likes of Facebook and Google, which dominate the digital advertising market. Less than a year later, three of the companies Pretty referred to as potential partners have done deals, had done deals. Vice, which is a more male-focused audience, acquired by Refinery29, which targets millennial females to target $4 billion publishing group. Vox bought New York Media, which owns a site including Venture, The Cut, to build scale. Meanwhile, it is engaged in Dece- it emerged in December that BuzzFeed's international operations, non-US businesses included UK, Germany, Australia, and Brazil, had seen losses quadruple in 2018. International revenue fell by 35% according to most recently available public figures. In the same year, BuzzFeed cut a third of its UK newsroom staff. BuzzFeed is hemorrhaging cash. None of this is going to change. At the same time, BuzzFeed News began asking readers to help shape the future of its content through donations, a similar model used by The Guardian. The support page from one at the bottom of the news stories asked for donations between $5 and $100 to diversify away from relying on advertising revenue. A good thing to do if you're an independent content creator. Hey, watch this. I'm an independent content creator. Everything this article says about advertising revenue is true. It's absolutely tanking right now. Um... If you enjoy a a content creator, whoever that may be, and you're in the position to, and you want to, uh, there's a, usually a join button right below the video. That's a great way to support. And, uh, I would greatly appreciate if I'm one of the content creators you enjoy and, um, want to support that you click that button and, uh, you back the channel for however much you're comfortable with. If you can't, I a hundred percent understand. The reality is a very small percentage of people can do that. And that's just the way it works. The advertising revenue model is changing. And these old mega Goliath legacy media companies are too big and clunky to make the change. Many YouTubers um, are live streaming. I I earn more money live streaming than I do in a week if I commit to it. Um, They're selling merch. They're, They're taking independent sponsorships. These big companies, nobody wants to buy a BuzzFeed shirt. Nobody likes BuzzFeed. They like independent content creators, which is why we're totally kicking your butts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rest in pepperonis, more BuzzFeed positions. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you again real soon.